In this circuit diagram, we're asked to find the range of values for alpha in which the op amp does not saturate. Assume the op amp is ideal. When we assume the op amp is ideal, we know that no current will be flowing into here, and we know that our positive terminal, this is going to be the voltage of positive, is equal to our voltage of negative, the Vn. And we know that it's going to be plus minus for both of these. So our Vn is equal to Vp, that is standard. In this example, we know that our Vp is connected to the ground right here. And since it's connected to the ground, that means it's going to be equal to zero. This is important to keep in mind for a little bit later in our problem. Now we need to write out an equation that includes our V theta, because when it's asking us about saturation, that means it's going to be close to the top voltage or close to the lowest voltage. And these will be our V naught. So we're gonna make a formula that includes our V naught. However, we also need to include our alpha symbol. And that's because we want to find the upper saturation and the lower saturation. Those would be our V naught and our alpha would be in between this. So we're going to use the node voltage method. When we're doing this, we can really consider this to be one node because Vn is the same across both of them, but we're just going to deal with this closest node. So this is our Vn node. When we're looking at this, first we're going to have our Vn, and we know we have to deal with this 250 millivolts going into it. So we're going to have a minus 250 millivolts, and this is all over the 1.6 kilo ohm resistor. After this, we have this part right here, this 6.4 kilo ohm resistor, and we know that over it we're going to have our Vn, and then the 6.4 kilo ohms of resistance. Lastly, we know we have some current coming through this way, and if we look at the voltage, we can see that it's going to be this V naught because it comes all the way up through here, down here, in through here, and then back this way. So we will have a plus Vn minus V naught, and this will all be over the 12 kilo ohm resistor plus the 50 kilo ohm resistor, but we know we have our alpha with our 50 kilo ohm resistor. So when we write this, we'll make this a little bit bigger. We are going to have our alpha 50 kilo ohms plus 12 kilo ohms. And we know that once it goes into a node, it's all equal to zero. Before we solve this, we want to write out a few things. We know that our Vn is equal to zero. So this is zero. This will be zero. So that means this whole entire thing is zero. And this Vn is also zero. Now we're going to deal with the first part. We have 250 millivolts, or a negative 250 millivolts. We're going to divide this. We have 250 millivolts over our 1.6 kilo ohms. So we're going to have to take care of both of these. We'll do them one at a time. First, we'll deal with our 1 millivolts. And this is going to be 1 millivolt is equal to 10 to the negative 3. And then for our kilo ohms, we have 1 kilo is equal to 10 cubed. So if we were to do this, we're going to get rid of the units because they cancel out, and we're going to be left with amps in here. If we plug this into a calculator, we can get 250 divided by 1.6 divided by 10 raised to the cubed divided by 10 also raised to the cubed, and that'll give us this answer. We can rewrite this if we move the decimal all the way over. Also make sure not to forget this negative out front here because we did not include it in the calculator. After this, we know the second part is a zero, so we are not going to include that, but we are going to include our V naught. However, we can move it over to the right side. So we're gonna get an equals V naught, and this will get rid of the negative because we're adding it. And then this is the alpha times 50. And then instead of writing kilo ohms twice, I'm just gonna put it in parentheses plus 12 kilo ohms like this. Now we know that we want to get our alpha by itself. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by this so that it goes down here. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by this so it can go on this side. This is what we're gonna get after we do this. And now we can do a few more simplifying things. First, I'm going to just have our alpha on this side. And then when I set this equal, I'm setting it equal to our V naught. And we know we have this negative 156, 25 times a now 10 to the negative fifth. We can subtract 12 from both sides, put everything in parentheses, and then divide it by the 50. Now, we know that our V naught 
at saturation is going to be either 5 volts or negative 5 volts. The negative that we get from this alpha will be our lower bound and the positive will be our upper bound. So we're going to plug 5 and negative 5 into here. If we do this carefully and correctly for our 5 value, we are going to get a 0 0.4. And for our negative 5 value, we are going to get a negative 0.88. However, this is not the correct answer. When we look at our circuit diagram, we notice, and we drew it, we drew it right here, we know that our alpha is with our resistor. And we know that a resistor cannot be negative. Sure, a current can be negative, voltage can even be negative. However, a resistor cannot be negative. This cannot be a negative value. So if we are given a negative value right here, this is super important. If we are given a negative value, it is going to default to be zero if it is a resistor that we are looking at for our range. These are the answers for this problem. If you have any questions about the material we covered, you can leave them in the comments below. If you want more intro to circuit analysis problems, there will be a playlist in the description as well as notes I used to study for this course.